In this video, I'm going to be counting down the top 10 bosses that you can destroy using the Puppeteer Ninjutsu in Sekiro. Some are so unique you wouldn't even think to use the Puppet skill like number 2 on this list. It's also worth noting that the Ceremonial Tanto may be used as it gives a bonus 15 emblems allowing you to use the skill 3 times for free. So kicking off number 10 in this video is Orin of the Water and the Bell Giant. It's quite clear that this will be a very one-sided fight with this giant on your side. To do this, just simply run past her and she'll follow you along this bridge. If you keep on following the path, you'll find the giant with his back turned just asking for a stealth blow. Turn him into a puppet and then help him take out the surrounding enemies. When you're done, use the puppet skill again just to keep him alive and then bring him towards the bridge where Orin will be waiting. Now it's very common that most first time players will get sliced apart from Orin of the Water. However, just seeing her get destroyed despite feels like the revenge many of us needed. The only reason she's number 10 on the list is because there are much easier ways to beat her. In at number 9 we have Lone Shadow Vile Hand and the Ninja Sidekick. This is one of the more obvious bosses to fight using the Puppeteer Ninjutsu, purely because at this point you would have just acquired the skill and you can easily take out this ninja and use him to help you in this fight. If you decide not to use any cheesy tactics and fight in a somewhat fair way shall we say, then using this puppet is definitely a big help, especially when the boss is quite aggressive and has a poison status inflicting combo. The AI in this fight makes him attack whoever hits him last, making you vulnerable to fast counters, so you'll want to get a sneaky hit in just before your puppet attacks. Just be sure to keep the puppet alive throughout the fight so he lasts long enough so you can take both lives. Next up at number 8 we have the Chained Ogre and the Dangerous Red Guards. After stealth blowing for his first life from above, the two Red Guards will automatically attack the Ogre, but they end up dying pretty quick. So if you use the Divine Abduction tool and turn one of them into a puppet, you'll have a dual wielder on your side. If you happen to get lucky and turn both of them into puppets, you'll have two dual wielding ninjas slicing away this Ogre with their four blades. Standing back and just acting as the Puppet Master pulling the strings is probably the way to go. If you want to join the battle, you can, just know that you may get the occasional flying kick in the face. The Chained Ogre may not be very hard to beat solo, but this is a perfect example of how effective the Puppet Ninjutsu can be if used on the right enemies. Moving on to number 7, we have Snake Eyes Shirahagi and her or his lookalike. After the first life stealth blow, if you sneak around the back, you can puppet the lookalike and get that huge blasting fanon on your side. Using a Gatchin Spirit Fall or Sugar Flow detection definitely helps you stay undetected. You can then also puppet the sniper over here, but this one's more of a distraction, so it's better just to take the sniper out as soon as possible. At this point, the fight becomes a showdown between Snake Eyes and the Snake Eyes lookalike. It's worth noting that this is more likely available in New Game Plus due to acquiring the puppet skill later in the game. However, anyone striving to get 100% achievements in Sekiro will have to face this boss at least once in New Game Plus. And I can tell you this boss, it's very hard. Just be sure to keep the puppet alive for as long as you need, and then you can watch this old western style standoff from above. It's almost like a battle of who can draw faster. Coming in at number 6, we have Lone Shadow Masanaga and the Giant with the Bat. This one is a bit more tactical and requires some careful planning. Coming from the back end, if you take out all the enemies except the Giant with the Bat, you can circle around and come back for him last and turn him into a puppet. Then you can start blow the boss from this roof to take his first life. Just make sure to hit him or throw a shuriken at him before he blows his whistle to call his wolves. Now you can lure him back down the alley where the Giant is waiting to hit a home run. The added bonus here is, because the boss is so far out of his zone, he becomes less aggressive and even his wolves won't to help him when he blows his whistle. As long as you keep the giant puppet alive, you can keep watching him practice his swings. Before we get to the final 5, the full versions to a lot of these clips and much more are on the channel. I'll leave a link in the description and at the end, so be sure to check them out. And if you want to see more like this, leave a like and definitely subscribe so you don't miss out. Or better yet, hit the join button and become a channel member. That said, let's get back to the video. Taking the 5th spot is Tokajiro the Glutton and the Sharp Shooting Monkey. It's very rare if anyone's tried this one before, but to do this, start off by taking out the 3 monkeys around the boss, or leave the Sniper Monkey above alive. Then if you leave the area and return when they're no longer on alert, you can turn this Sniping Monkey into your puppet. You can then start blow the boss for his first life and use the help of the sniping monkey for the second life. The best thing about this strategy is that the boss seems to get confused on who he should go after, so every time he gets shot by the monkey, it's likely you can run behind him and get a few slashes in, then run away and let the monkey do his thing. As usual though, as long as you keep the monkey alive, you can rinse and repeat this sniper trick till he's dead. What's even better is that the boss can't even touch this monkey because he's on a higher ground, which leaves the boss vulnerable. Though it's not technically a cheese strategy, it's a tactic to make a somewhat difficult mini boss very easy. 
Coming in at number 4 we have 7 Ashina Spear Shumi and the Dying Soldier. At first glance one might think it's a good idea to turn his samurai friend into the puppet, but this just doesn't work out that well and would mean you'd have to take out 2 whole lives off the boss. Instead, finish his buddy off and then leave the area and return. This allows you to get that all important death blow first. Now the real hero in this fight is this dying legend of a soldier on the floor. Like our monkey friend at number 5, this guy's also pretty good with a rifle. After the death blow, if you attack this soldier then use the vault over skill, you can turn him into a puppet. The boss then has the dilemma of who he should go after. Every time he gets shot by the rifle, you're free to land a hit or two on his backside. But since he has such a long reach with his spear, the best way to attack him is with your own spear, followed by a standard sword attack. Then just keep your distance until he gets shot and his attention turns to the puppet and repeat. Using the puppet skill twice is enough to end this fight, but getting back to him is quite dangerous. So if you drop some firecrackers to distract the boss whilst you extend the puppet's life, you can then continue to torture him. It's now looking more and more likely that clearing Sekiro without parrying is definitely possible. In at number 3 is Jazoa the Drunkard and the Weak Poisonous Arrow Bandits. This is the hidden version in the second memory of the Hirata estate. Initially you can lure out the ninja next to the boss with the whistle tool, and once again you may think this is the enemy to turn into a puppet, but it's actually the weaker enemies that are the star performers of this show. If you then leave the area and return, you can get that all important stealth blow for Jazo's first life which isn't possible if you puppet the ninja. Immediately after, you can turn these two weak arrow bandits into puppets. The beauty of this one is that these arrows actually inflict poison status on the boss, at the very same time he becomes confused and doesn't know who to attack, so he ends up taking taking a long walk between each enemy and Sekiro, making this a very unfair 3 on 1 battle. You'll find one puppet is shooting the poisonous arrows whilst the other is having a duel, and then finally Sekiro coming in from the back. Just be sure to use the puppeteer ninjutsu one more time on each bandit so that they last long enough to drain the boss's health. In the meantime, you're free to run up behind and slice him up. Taking the number 2 spot is 7 Ashina Spear Shikubu versus not 1 but 2 Giants. Again, this is one that's only available from New Game Plus onwards. This strategy is very tactical and requires near perfect gameplay but is incredibly satisfying to do. Before you can even face this boss, you have to start off by turning both of these giants into puppets and then helping them clear the entire area of enemies. Fortunately, almost all the attention then goes to the 2 giant puppets, allowing you to sneak behind all the snipers taking them out one by one. Probably the most difficult part of this is managing your time, as you need to use the puppet ninjutsu on the giants again before they die. By my estimation, they usually last about 40 to 45 seconds. Once you've cleared most of the enemies and given the puppets more life, take this back end shortcut to 7 spears so you can bring him out to play. After the juicy death blow from above, let him follow you down the stairs towards the giants. At this point, all your hard work will have paid off and you can sit back and enjoy the show. As usual, just be sure to keep the puppets alive as long as possible. As I mentioned at the start of the video, you can use a ceremonial tanto three times, giving you a bonus 15 emblems in total. Before I reveal who takes the number one spot, here are some notable mentions of enemies you can use the puppeteer ninjutsu on to clear whole areas or massive groups of enemies. If you want to see the full version of these clips, I'll leave a link at the end and in the description. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and hit the join button if you want to become a channel member too. Taking the number 1 spot for me is Shigekichi of the Red Guard and the Flame Throwing Puppet. In all fairness, any of the top 3 videos could have taken the number 1 spot, but because of the creativity behind this, this one's number 1 for me. As the dual wielding ninja gets to the top of the stairs, turn him into a puppet. Immediately after, you can use the Divine Abduction tool to turn the Flame Throwing Guard into a puppet too. But well, this big guy has some incredible health, and that's because of his armour. Using the Spear Prosthetic tool, you can strip off his armour completely, which lowers his defence, allowing you to do some serious damage. If you're lucky, one round of puppets is enough to do the job, after all, one puppet is burning him alive and the other one is slicing him up from behind. Although this one's not too difficult to pull off, watching this flame throwing overpowered puppet in action is something else and is worthy of taking the number one spot. Do you agree with this list? If not, drop a comment below what your favourite puppet fight was or if there's something I may have missed, let me know in the comments. Ultimately, this is just my personal preference that I wanted to share. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.